Hello everyone, in this section of the tutorial, I will be covering how to differentiate between winning and losing scenarios. By end of this video, you should be able to create your version of the game. Let's begin right away. When the vehicles collide, the lose method is triggered. To simulate a car crash, I have added a rigid body and collider component to each car through the script. To make this happen, we need to open the car manager's script and access the rigid body and collider components. By using the add force at position function, we can apply force and rotation to the crashed car. Initially, the schematic and its trigger options are disabled when the cars collide. Then the force and rotation are applied to the cars. To keep cars from falling, let's add a plane to support them. If the vehicles collide during gameplay, the game will end. However, there is another way the game can end. When the number of possible moves reaches zero. To achieve a win, the count tracks must be reduced when a car reaches the parking line. You can do this by going to the path follower script and reducing it. When the car returns to its initial position, the count tracks must be increased as if no movement has happened. After each movement, the victory method will check the value of count tracks. If it's zero, the level is completed. Using a basic animation, we can create a realistic stopping effect for the car. To achieve the desired result, we only need to rotate the car body on the x-axis slightly. We should arrange the car game objects and keep the body and wheels separate to accomplish this.
To import deuterium, I already have it in my assets and just need to import it. If you cannot locate it in the package manager, you should access the asset store and import it from there. To learn more about this package, please refer to this video. Let's open the path follower script again and add this line of code. Firstly, we need to access the first child of the core, which is the body. Then we should rotate it 5 degrees on the x axis twice. To achieve this, we can use the set loops syntax, which rotates the core body 5 degrees and then returns it to 0. Finally, the animation type could be in out sign. As you can see, when the car stops at the destination, it will rotate slightly and back to normal. You might not have noticed, but there is a critical issue with the game. When I repeatedly click on the car, the number of moves value decreases while the car is in motion. This value should only decrease when the car reaches its destination or returns to its starting position. We can easily fix this issue by adding a boolean variable. If the lock touch variable is true, the car can't touch. We can reset it when the car stops. Now if the user touches the car, the number of moves value remains the same, which is our goal. Alright guys, we have completed the game mechanics and taught you the game how to detect wins and loses. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. See you next time.